Hey guys, how's it going? It's Al, week 11 on FanDuel, and I'm going to take a first look at everything that they have to offer on this slate, position by position. We're going to try and build a tournament lineup for week 11 here. We're going to take a look at what quarterback stacks look uh, tasty, I guess. It's still early in the week. It's only Tuesday. The whole picture hasn't come into focus yet. We'll focus more on my top stacks on Thursday, just like we do every week. We'll go through like five of the stacks that I think are good plays, whether it's going to be chalky stacks or whether it's going to be a little bit more contrarian plays. Uh, and I think that video has helped people out a lot, especially with how to integrate that stuff into a lineup builder. This show is about hand building a tournament lineup that has solid correlation in a primary stack with a bring back player, a secondary stack. That's a stack two correlated players from opposing teams that does not use a quarterback uh, in that secondary stack just to bring it down from having to hit a nine team parlay to maybe filling four, five, six, seven of those spots. So we don't have to hit nine things. We just have to be right about two things. Much easier to be right about two things than nine things. Thank you guys for showing up day after day. I appreciate you guys a ton. Let's see if we can get a thousand likes on this video or more. That's up to you. That's something that you can do. Click that like button. Subscribe really helps the channel. Anything that you click really helps the channel. Obviously ring that notifications bell so that you get notified anytime I publish new NFL content or anything else on the first channel. And we now have the join button as well. If you wanted to become a channel member, you can then join Discord, which I think is the best value add that we have here in the Smiz gang for you to be able to get over there. Join Discord, link your YouTube account to the Discord account, and then your name will turn red in my Discord and then you have access to all the subs only channels where there's people to surround yourself with and talk to about daily fantasy strategy, plays, games, uh, the philosophy, whatever you want to discuss with like-minded people in a troll-free environment, over 4,200 people already in our Discord and growing every single day. So thank you guys very much. That's all for this for the uh, for the intro, for the preamble. And let's get over and take a look at Andal. So we're going to start at quarterback. Obviously, we have a lot of guys that we can stack this week. It's a weird slate uh, from my perspective. Kind of the way that I look at things, there's no really high totaled games. There's a lot of mismatched toys uh, and a lot of things that, fill spots that don't allow for a lot of the secondary stacks that we want to go and get. So it's it's kind of an interesting slate from that perspective, right? Like this isn't a 2019-2018 slate from a Vegas perspective. Knowing that we're missing like Arizona and Seattle and Kansas City and like all the high-priced players, all the high-powered offenses are not on this slate, which is putting us in some awkward positions. Uh, and possibly leading us down the road to go with skinny stacks. Like uh, the Chargers, who have a, a pretty solid offense, playing a really weak defense in the Jets, you might not want to bring this back with anybody from the Jets. So skinny stacks also more in play for me this week than they have been in previous weeks, at least from a first look standpoint. So Aaron Rodgers has been really, really solid every week this year. One of the highest totaled games on the slate. Uh, you can see he's been... 25 points or above three of the last four weeks on FanDuel. You don't get the bonus for 300 yards, but multiple touchdowns passing in pretty much every game this year, except for the game against Tampa Bay. Uh, he's, he's just having a ridiculous season. I posted a tweet yesterday about how ridiculously efficient quarterbacks are being this year. So I've said this numerous times in the past. Aaron Rodgers and Russ Wilson are two of the most efficient quarterbacks of this last 30 to 35 years in the NFL. And as efficient as they are, they've got a career touchdown percentage. That is touchdown passes per attempt. Like if they throw a pass, what percent of their pass attempts turn into touchdowns of like 6.2 and 6.1. This year, there's like 11 quarterbacks that are throwing over 6% touchdown rates all the way up to like Patrick Mahomes at like nine and a half or 10. Like it's, it's absurd how many guys are being super efficient and we can look for reasons why that is uh, so many games going over the total. And that's why quarterbacks have been ridiculously efficient this year. So Aaron Rodgers going to be an expensive stack. We know who he's going to throw it to most weeks. Obviously he's got Adams. You can stack with him and you're going to pay up to be contrarian. If you do that, you're going to have to find value. There is value to be found. Uh, on this slate. This is a tougher defense than he's faced most weeks with Indy, but it is one of the highest total games on the slate. So maybe he's going to be a little bit less efficient. 
uh, in this situation, but they are predicting a lot of scoring uh, and Indy tough against the run. So I wouldn't be shocked to see him have multiple touchdowns again in this game. Justin Herbert just said the same thing. I'm okay with skinny stacks with Justin Herbert this week. If you don't want to bring it back with one of the Jets players, uh, but I would probably try to find one of the Jets pass catchers that you assume is going to get a lot of volume and maybe sneak their way into the end zone one time to just have a bring back player and they're not going to be expensive. Lamar Jackson has underperformed all season long. Basically, the majority of his targets are only going to two guys, but he has not been efficient this year. He's only got, uh, what is it? He's got one, two games, three games, over 25 FanDuel points. Like that's This is not the same guy as last year. We've talked numerous times about how fluky rushing touchdowns are. Uh, on a week-in, week-out basis, on a year-in, year-out basis. So, like, if you were expecting Lamar Jackson to run for the same amount of rushing touchdowns that he ran for last year, that was extremely fluky, and teams seem to have figured out how to defend without Lamar Jackson being the same threat that he was last year on the ground. Even though he is running the ball plenty, uh, they figured out how to kind of slow the efficiency of this offense, and with nobody to really catch balls underneath, uh, it's really hurt them. Now, they do, they are a little bit more thin at tight end this week because of the injury to Boyle. So maybe Mark Andrews is going to run some more routes, which is something that we always love to see because uh, he is a very good tight end on a efficiency per route run basis, but they leave him into block a lot and he doesn't really run 70, 80% of routes per dropbacks. But that might change this week with the injuries that they've sustained at tight end. And obviously, Marquise Brown uh, is one play away. They just haven't clicked this year. He's basically only running deep routes. Uh, if he connects, then they're going to be fine. We'll see how that goes. There's some cheap quarterbacks to consider. Clearly, we have an injury with like multiple broken ribs and a collapsed lung. Ouch to uh, Drew Brees. So Jameis Winston, 7,200. Seems like he's too cheap, especially in this matchup against Atlanta. Uh, a game that we can easily stack and bring back. Ryan Tannehill against Baltimore. If you believe that that passing game is going to do well and as much of a funnel defense as Tennessee has been allowing more yards to the pass and against uh, on, on the ground than stacking him and bring it back with Tennessee guys or stacking with Tannehill, uh, expecting Baltimore's defense to not be as efficient as they were expected to be at the beginning of the year. Joe Burrow, uh, we're getting a ton of good looks from him pretty much every single week, uh, except against Pittsburgh. Uh, as we've known, we're getting a lot of attempts going for a ton of yards uh, has lots of good weapons and they're not priced at a ridiculous point where we have to avoid them yet. In my opinion on FanDuel, I don't think they're priced high enough. Deshaun Watson in the win last week, we have a bounce back spot for him this week. We had 14 points after scoring like 24 to 32 points each of the last month on all the four games that were prior to that. We know where the ball is going to go when it comes out of his hands. I also think that Duke Johnson is going to be underappreciated this week based on his performance in his week 10 game but the underlying stuff was great he played 51 snaps which was way more than he had played at any point during this season they cj Procise played like two snaps uh so it's basically the duke johnson show but that offense sputtered in the wind as most offenses do sputter in the wind i'd love to see deshaun watson include duke johnson a little bit more in his passing offense they just don't seem to throw the ball to the running backs in houston but that is his best part of his skill set but just being on the field and running like 23 routes last week on his 51 snaps very encouraging for duke johnson and deshaun watson throwing it mostly to cooks and um he does throw his tight ends when he gets close so monitoring which ones are going to be healthy by the end of the week is going to be important and will fuller has had a fantastic year but where i'm going to go with this lineup we're going to go with ben rosselsberger because we have attacked jacksonville like literally every week, and I'm not stopping now. They do have some cheap options on Jacksonville that we can bring back with. I'm probably not going to use Robinson as a bring back player with this stack. Jacksonville, you can see just on the summary, <laughs> their defensive rank is 31st. Against the pass, their 30th. Rush, their 27th. Uh, I'm sure that people are going to be itching, especially because of the price hike on running backs on FanDuel to maybe go with James Conner. I'm going to go the other route with Ben Roethlisberger. And DraftKings kind of price these guys out a little bit, but FanDuel didn't. Uh, seems like they kind of got cute, and I would assume that a lot of the projection models that you guys are going to use are going to be just as cute, which means it's going to be absolutely no separation between Juju Smith-Schuster, Chase Claypool, and Deontay Johnson because people are just going to expect that they're going to do about the same thing as one another. Uh, if I have to pick one, on DraftKings, it's going to be Deontay Johnson. On FanDuel, it's going to be Chase Claypool. I would advocate 
by the time the weekend comes, if you're building multiple lineups to have du Ben double stacks, uh, if you're going against going with uh, Connor, I'm probably not going to allow Connor to get into my tournament lineups. There's not very much correlation between Connor and Ben Roethlisberger, and it's too tough to expect five touchdowns in a game from any team, but not too tough to expect three touchdown passes. So I'm going to go with Chase Claypool, who's seeing a ton of work around the goal line, does have that big splash ability. We've seen him get that merit-based promotion where he is now starting opposite of Deontay Johnson. And since that happened against Baltimore, 9, 13, and 10 targets in that win last week, we mentioned this on the anti-Tinkercast that he was probably going to be less efficient because of his higher average depth of target. Even though he is targeted on short and intermediate routes, he also is a very high targeted, big splash ability type guy. Gets targeted downfield a lot uh, for Ben, and that was going to take away his efficiency. He did score two touchdowns, but only caught four of 10 targets. That should jump if he still gets 10 targets to maybe six, maybe seven catches if he can get double digit targets here. So a solid floor with a solid ceiling because of his touchdown upside and big splash ability. I'm going to go with him. And then looking at the other side, DJ Chark. Everybody's going to be up and down because of the quarterback situation. Uh, so I'm going to want to invest in the players that are getting solid targets. Uh, that are playing a solid amount of snaps. And everybody was on Keelan Cole last week in retrospect, right? After the game. Oh, yeah, I knew Keelan Cole was going to be the guy. Did you, though? He scored a kick return touchdown, had 19 points, five catches for 47 yards. And again, in a win situation, Chris Conley, once again, in the absence uh, of LaVisca, got another eight targets. Assuming that LaVisca doesn't play this week, it is Tuesday. If this changes, then we will just play someone else. There's plenty of value on this slate for us to go different routes. But for the sake of this lineup, I'm going to go with Chris Conley here because he gives me a ton of value with a lot of volume and uh, over the last two weeks and touchdown upside because of how often he is used in the red zone and how often he is used in the end zone for this Jaguars offense. So that gives me our stack with our primary bring, bring back player. We're going to go over to running back. Uh, and just to keep it real simple, just to keep things real simple for you. Yes. We're going to play Dalvin cook. Yes. It's a short week. Yes. Dallas is Dallas, and they, you, you can play the passing game. If you want to go with Jefferson, if you want to go with Thielen, if you want to go with Cousin Stacks, single or double, and avoid Dalvin Cook to, to get off of the amount of people that are going to click his name, fine. I think that you can eat some of the chalk. I don't think that it's about the percent that one player has played. It's way more about the total percent uh, cumulative of your entire lineup, trying to stay below like 140 cumulative percent points for that entire lineup. And that's where stacking, double stacking, bring back players, secondary stacks, all comes into play to help us do that. But building this secondary stack, now that we can fit Dalvin Cook into this lineup, I'm going to go with Alvin Kamara. The change to possibly Jameis Winston, the threat to this would be Taysom Hill, which would take away, because Taysom Hill, not a really good passer. And also you could say that Jameis doesn't really involve his running backs as much in the passing game, but that's just the philosophy, right? So James is more likely to challenge downfield than Drew Brees was willing to challenge downfield. So I understand if you don't want to pay up for Alvin Kamara, but we're building a tournament lineup here. So I'm less concerned with how efficient this player looks in the model that you're you're going with, right? The, the projection sheet that you're going with. I'm more concerned with what is the upside possible here? And Dalvin Cook, we know, has 30 plus point FanDuel upside. And Alvin Kamara has... 30 plus point upside on any given week. So that's the route that I want to go. Looking at a bring back player in that game, there's plenty of ways that we can look. Obviously, uh, Julio Jones, we have to monitor Calvin Ridley uh, in terms of his injury. You want to go with Todd Gurley. I'm not going to use two running backs from the same game. Not in a tournament. It's typically not how I go. But Hayden Hurst at 5,500 is still too cheap. Uh, He's done nothing but absolutely produce for us in terms of a volume uh, perspective. Since that Green Bay game, six targets, six targets, only four against Minnesota, but he caught all of them, uh, including a touchdown. Seven against Detroit, seven against Carolina, eight against Denver. He gives us a really high floor with touchdown upside here in a game that could be a sneaky shootout with absolutely no weather. So at 5,500, I want to plug in Hayden Hurst to bring back against Alvin Kamara. But I did want to talk about one other play from that game. Not absolute minimum salary, 
But at 4,500, if we project that Taysom Hill is going to play more than the 10 to 20 snaps that he normally plays when Drew Brees is playing on DraftKings, Taysom Hill is not in play for me because he's quarterback only. But at tight end for 4,500, if you project that Taysom Hill is going to play more like 20 to 30 snaps, be more involved in the passing game where he typically sees like one to two targets a game uh, with Breeze there, and get you some inside the five wildcat quarterback type usage and possibly get some more snaps as an actual passer in this offense, whether it's by decoy or what, if he plays... 50% more snaps at 4,500 at tight end with as dire as tight end has been this year. Taysom Hill is going to be an extremely popular play for 4,500 on FanDuel. If you want to work him into a tournament lineup for you, I'm totally fine with that. Uh, this is just the route that I'm going. I'm going with Kamara and Hayden Hurst and stacking the volume, uh, which I think Kamara is going to have a percent on him, but not as high as it would be in a normal week because of this 9,700 price tag. So this combination may be a little bit less played because there's other players at running back that are a little bit cheaper that I think are going to be better from a points per dollar in projection standpoint uh, with Aaron Jones at 8,200. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott's 8K. I don't think he's going to be the guy that, that people are going to turn to against Minnesota. Miles Sanders against Cleveland at 77. Uh, I don't think people are going to be playing Mike Davis at 74, even though it's against Detroit. Some will in the absence of Christian McCaffrey, but like, I don't think people are going to be thrilled to. James Conner at 7,000 is somebody people are going to flock to. DeAndre Swift at 6,900. People are going to flock to. Antonio Gibson at 6,500 as well. McKissick down at his price. Uh, there's plenty of cheaper plays. Duke Johnson, who I mentioned before, that I think is going to be underplayed this week. Uh, in a good matchup against New England at 6,000. There's a lot of ways that you can go here. But for me in the flex, I'm going to look a little bit cheaper and Salvan Ahmed. And he's been good. He's like actually good. Saw the majority of their red zone touches at running back this week uh, against the Chargers. Saw, I think, two or three inside the five touches this week. Saw 21 total, only one catch, but this is not a high PPR site. It's half PPR. So while he's not all that involved in the passing game, they just don't throw it all that much. And he's looked good every time he's had the ball in his hands for a team that is basically a running and defense team with a rookie quarterback right now. For 5,600, we're looking for like 10 to 12 points out of Ahmed. And I think that we can get there for the price and open ourselves up with, with a, an actual ton. Oh, wait, I put him in the flex. Okay, let me fix that. So Hurst at 5,500. You could play Hunter Henry there at tight end also. Uh, flex, we're going with Ahmed. And I know it's not phonetically spelled that way, but based on the pronunciation that I've looked up, that's the way his name is pronounced. So I'm doing my best. That leaves us with an average of 4,700. I'm going to plug in just a cheap defense just for the sake of getting this lineup done. Uh, fine, that leaves me with 6,200. Let's see what's remaining at 6,200 and see if we can find a one-off with a little bit of volume here. You could afford DJ Chark and go with a different punt play, or you could double stack. I'm fine with that. Brandon Cooks uh, as a one-off. Good bounce back week for him, assuming no weather, because it's dumb. Uh, and then Jacoby Myers on the other side has seen essentially like 40 plus percent of the targets for New England. At 6K, we're looking for 11 to 14 points out of him. He's done exactly that. Uh, with an absolute boatload of targets headed his way. As a one-off in that situation, I'm fine with it. So Ben Roethlisberger uh, with Chase Claypool coming back with Chris Conley. Dalvin Cook is a one-off. Alvin Kamara, he is my secondary stack with Hayden Hurst. Jacoby Myers, Salvin Ahmed went with the Falcons defense. Hey, they correlate well with Jameis Winston, right? We'll go with that. Make sure if you join this uh, channel as a channel member, Get yourself over to Discord. Even if you're not, there's plenty of free channels as well for you to mix and mingle with all the viewers here from YouTube and Twitch. And look out for another video right there. He's a legend.